this. Okay. I think we're live, live broadcasting from the heart of downtown Toronto. It's the awesome art hour. The wicked ass, kick ass art hour. Brought to you by Druckman Art. All right. Let's just make sure we're on. We got Facebook's there. It looks like D Live's there. That picky art thing looks there. It looks like Twitter. Who knows? Okay. Hmm. I feel nice and spaced out. Here's what I want to do. Wait. Let me see if I can see comments. Okay. Let's go top down view. Right on. Look at that. the belly. Look at the belly comes forward. Oh. Uh oh, I can hear myself talking somewhere. Gotta turn that off. Okay. Hmm. Oh, did you looks like Facebook might have frozen all my videos? I don't know. Okay. Alrighty then. Oh, Bonnie Bunch. <laughs> I thought it said titty. Sorry. I laughed at your name before I know. Tittle. What's up, Bonnie? Tittle. <laughs> ah, god damn. Okay. What I'm gonna do is do some stuff. Do some stuff. Do some stuff. Last page of this. And since the last page, I'm just gonna leave it. Actually, you know what I'll do? Let's rip off the cover and we'll toss it that way. And what we'll do is we will. Hey, baby. What's up, baby? Do you want to say hi? Do you want to say hi? Do you want to just give you a very nice treat? Do you want to come up? Hello. Hello, my little baby girl. Oh, you're so cute. You are so cute. Yes, you are. Slippery feet on a chair. Oh, look at your face. It's all squishy. Oh, I should make her do the drawing. What if I could do this? Hey, Nugget, stay here. You are going to create art today. Let's see if you can do this. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Up, 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 here. Up, 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 up. Good girl. Put, no, no, it's okay. You don't have to be afraid of it. It's just a pencil. Can you put it in your mouth? Yeah, put it in your mouth. And we're going to do some drawing. Goddamn stupid dogs. Can't do anything with dogs. It would have been the first art, dog art. Okay. Let's just try this one more time. I'm, I know I can do it. I know I can do this. She can do it. Or, okay, come here, Nugget. Come here, baby. Up, up. Up, up. Okay. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Don't be afraid. It's so weird. She's like unafraid of some things and terrified of a, a piece of paper. Nugget, come here, baby. Good girl. Good girl. Come here. Good girl. Can you just stay? Stay. It's okay. It's okay. You smell it. Just smell it. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's just a piece of paper. It's okay. Let's smell it. You're gonna be. We're gonna make art together. But I need you not to be afraid of the piece of paper. Come here, baby. Look. Look. Come here. It's okay. You smell it. Smell it. Against it. This might take a while. I was. That's what I was gonna do. I was gonna. Well, I was gonna see if I could put it in her mouth, and then she can draw it. But I'm. Trying to get her to use her paws, but she's uh, temporarily scared of this piece of paper. All right. <sighs> Damn it. So here's the thing. I can make something awesome out of nothing. Wickedly awesome. So I drew with my elbow once. Guess I'm not using that pencil. Put the canvas on the floor, point, paint all around the edges. That Sounds too complicated. What if I just drew with my feet? You want to see what a man's foot looks like? It's not a pleasant thing. Nah, she won't, she won't, she's afraid of it. I once got a pedicure. And I was, uh, actually really enjoyed it. They had the scraper thing that came out. It looked like one of the cheese slicer. And it was like scraping off layers off my foot. And... Afterwards, my feet felt awesome. I just can't bring myself to do it again. I think I've got, I had a manicure once. 
I can't remember how that happened. Oh, I used to get my hair cut at this cheapo place. And the Filipinos owned it, really loved me. And then they convinced me to get a manicure. I don't know why I said yes, but they put my feet, they had like a massage chair and they put my feet in like, I was sitting in the massage chair. I'm like giant, right? And so I'm sitting there like tiny little uh, fucking massage chair. And I think they had hot water on my feet. Oh yeah, that was, yeah. And I remember like, they were like all talking away and because here's what happens to me, man. I'm not, I'm not to look at this, like a, whoops, check like, look at that. Look at this nasty stuff. I got to take it off autofocus. I'm like this little weird, I got a splinter in it. And so this is all like coming off. And this is from my dog bite. I got a couple weeks ago and it's just like all bleh, bleh, like a caveman sort of. But I remember that I remember I got that manicure and holy shit, I should do it again. There was a man at an art festival in Stone Mountain, Georgia, that did stippling drawing with his feet because he had no arms. Yep, yeah, I can believe that. Stippling. I was wicked at stippling. Oh, dot, 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 dot. Okay, so this is my last piece of paper. We, we got, we're all, everyone's just yapping away. Bonnie's talking about nonsense. Teresa's talking about how stressed she thinks I am. Blah, 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 blah. But really, I'm just trying to make some wicked ass art here. And I, you know what? I, okay, fuck it. I was just thinking those, what's his name? That painting I like. A.Y. Jackson. I'm going to do a whole bunch of like, what if these are like trees? And then here's some stuff over here. And then, and then there's, oh, look at this little mountain. And there could be like a little bit of sun coming down over here. And then I don't know what the fuck this thing is over here, but done. Wicked. See? That's all you need to do to make the art. There's no magic to it. Just takes a few seconds of scribbly bits and there's scribbles and a little bit of Diet Pepsi to, no, no, Canada Dry, just to get things lubricated. How about some Canada Dry with some cobalt green? Look at that. Oh, well, actually it's kind of cool. Because it's carbonated. One day, this is going to be worth a lot of money. A lot. A lot of money. And little did they know it was created. Hey, is that Cheryl? What's up, Cheryl? We're, we're trying to do some art here. Uh, uh. <clears throat> this might can it dry. Ooh. See, you know what? Art is bullshit. Art is bullshit. You can say that you were here at the beginning. You were here at the beginning of this illustrious art career. You could say that you saw the dog almost painted it. Oh my God, that's horrible. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do just to piss myself off? I'm gonna put some pink in here. Watch this, Whitley. You just watch, watch this bullshit artist, ready? How many did Oh, so, uh, disgusting pink. You know, sadly, I don't do drugs. The strongest drug that I do is coffee. I don't need. Jeez, that'd be, that'd be a mess. No, this is just what artists do. They get all weird and shit. The thing is that I just do it normally in private and on the. If you see me walking down the hall, I'll just look like a regular old schmo. Ooh. Let's see if I'm gonna make it so ugly. I'm gonna make it so ugly, and I promise you, this is gonna turn into some kind of gorgeous thing. Ooh, gross. Where's that black? 
This is going to turn into the most wicked, wicked ass thing. <clears throat> Come on, you. <clears throat> oh, disgusting. What else can I do? Let's not even use the brush. Let's just go like this. Ugh. I'll bet you. I'll bet you fifty bucks. When I'm done this, it's gonna be totally kick ass. I I got uh, I got uh, Cheryl to swear. She said bird shit. That's it. We're done. <sighs> Have we got um, the old science PhD over here, Wesley, telling us about his like uh, different stages of of biology of insects pupating and whatnot. Okay, this is gonna be so awesome. But yeah, this is probably the most horrible I think I could do. But the end result will be shocking. The end result. You will be amazed. Oh, is it possible? Let's try to make it even worse. Let's make it even worse. Ooh, it makes this green and that ugh, that's disgusting. All right, you fools. What does a chemist, you can't even spell chemist right for crying out loud, Wesley, illiterate buffoon. Chemist. Okay. Now we are going to turn this thing into a beautiful thing. You just wait. You wait your pretty little heads. There's going to be... Like I said, those, what would I call them? A.Y. Jackson kind of beautiful trees happening over here with these weird bushes. And over here is going to be this horizon with the clouds that I'm awesome at. It's the old word baboon. That is kind of funny because my son and I, that's how we like to insult each other. We use the ye old English. I call him ye, what did I, what I text him the other day? Actually, I better not get my phone out, but it's pretty some funny stuff. I call them like a a silly, knave, buffoon. I think I actually were, you use the word buffoon. It's funny. So we, we, we insult each other in old English Shakespearean nonsense. He's actually quite good at it. Better than you, that's for sure. Sue, so this is not fun. This is serious business here, okay? We don't need that kind of attitude. We need a serious attitude because art is serious. Art is not messing around, Sue. Okay, Sue, Barry. I mean, come on. Come on, Sue. All right. Okay. There's no fun to be had here. Oh, is this white? Look how much white I have. Oh, this was the white I bought before. Never mind. Got excited and it's just the same one. Okay. Dick time, I see. I don't know what that means. It is some old ye English pun, which is making it even more, more, more harder <laughs> for me to know what the hell Wesley's talking about. You see, about 80% of the times Wesley says stuff, and I have no idea what he's talking about. I don't want to hurt his feelings because I think he's like, might be on the low end of the IQ spectrum, if you know what I mean. So... Just so that Wesley doesn't feel bad, I just sort of go along with his his humor. His humor. By the way, he's in a band. You know what that means. <sighs> Actually, I don't even know what that means. Okay. This. How do you turn this horrible steaming pile of nonsense gunk into a beautiful? Beautiful art gallery, timeless piece for the ages. How do you do that? Well, just watch. You just watch, and you will be edumacated. Dick time more harder, you say? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know what the reference, but there is a penis involved somehow. I don't know what my friend Wesley is yabbering on about 
most people don't. They just sort of feel badly for him because, like I said, low IQ spectrum, feel empathy, make him feel good, make sure his hockey helmet is on tight. Holy shit, this is going to be... This is going to be good. This is going to be like, what? How did this... Where did this beautiful work of art come from? Where did this magic happen? Well... It happened by being very serious about what you do. Oh, shit balls. I don't want black. You've got to be very serious. Art is meant to be. You must work on your pretentiousness if you're ever to make great art. I'm rude. That's bullshit, Cheryl. Excuse me, I had some carbonation. Rude. Cheryl. What are you talking about? You love me. Say I'm rude, Cheryl. <sighs> Had a long day at work today. Long day. When I feel like just doing something, who knows what. You are rude. Well, uh, oh well. I don't think I'm rude. I don't think I'm rude at all. I think you're crazy. I think you love it. Oh, a hockey helmet. That's right. What? You never had someone that had, uh, back in the day when I was a kid, if someone was uh, self-abusive, like autistic, used to put them a ho like a hockey helmet on so they wouldn't do it. There was a guy who lived around a corner from me. He was fully autistic. And I, I could tell you, I got so many stories about him. I even did a piece of artwork about him. And I used to, in a way, work with him. Like I would uh, take him to this uh, facility. And uh, I guess it was like low-tech gear. But back then, they, they had all kinds of like kids who were mostly autistic, like severely autistic, like non-communicative. The guy I was with, he could, speak, he could say yes and no. You could tell he was intelligent inside. But he was like fully autistic. Anyhow, the hockey helmet reference. You'll know what I'm talking about. Back in the day that kids were self-abusive, they couldn't control themselves. You put hockey helmets on them so that they wouldn't hurt themselves. That's what I was talking about. It's not rude. Or maybe it was a little bit. Ah, uh, well. I can't, you can't be too thin-skinned, man. You can't please everybody. Everybody's weird and crazy in their own way. Exactly. And the thing is, I hold all my shit inside until I do my artwork. I'm a very boring person in real life. I don't like to upset people. I go out of my way to make people feel comfortable and stuff. And then when I get into my art mode, I just look, can let myself go. You know what I'm saying? I like myself when I'm like this. I wish more people would like it because we're honest. Cheryl, talking about. The problem, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be in a hockey helmet one day, for sure. Well, they, they should make them look cool so the kids feel like they're wearing like a cool, actually when you think about it, maybe they actually like the fact they're, they're hockey helmets because they were, think they were cool. So maybe all along people thought that was like a humiliating thing to do, but in fact they were like, "Wicked! I'm wearing a I'm a hockey player." This is pure speculation, of course. I remember I had a friend. Oh, this is kind of a sad story, actually. I won't say his name, but he had a sister who was so f severely. I don't I don't know what the word how it's like. I think we used to just say mentally disabled, where she couldn't she couldn't take care of herself like. To even go to the bathroom and I didn't know and she was basically like living in a facility and she was like two years older than my buddy and I and I didn't know about her until I was like 10 years old because he said oh I'm gonna go see my sister I'm like what sister yeah so I don't think I ever met her and this was one of my best friends growing up I don't, I don't know what she was just born with. Um, yeah. 
Truth is a drink or few. I prefer to smoke up and then get more creative. Yeah, I don't need any any weed or drugs or anything. I would do it. I just, uh, I don't know. It just seems like a lot of effort. And I, stopped, I stopped drinking years ago. It would just make me tired and lazy, which is an astounding fact because I'm even more like in Rain Man. No, she was much worse. No, she wasn't autistic. See, with the autism, at least severe, I have a lot of experience with severe autism because of that one fellow I knew my whole life. And I used to work with him when I did, I did an undergrad in psychology. So part of the things you do placements and it just happens, this fellow lived around the corner from me and I used to go over and visit him all the time. He used to actually, when, since I was a kid, he used to escape, escape, just get out of his house. And he used to come over to my parents' backyard and loved swinging on the swing. And he would do things re just repeatedly. And I would eventually walk him back to his parents. And I loved his parents. They were so nice. The, the father was the lead trumpet player for the Toronto Symphony, and she was the harpist. So you'd walk in, and she would teach like world-class harpists around the world. And so you'd, I'd walk in, say hi to them, and they would just say, you know, go upstairs. Like, I won't say his name. And there would be some, like, harpist from, like, Korea, and they were it was just, like, fucking, like, music, beautiful stuff. So, so I know him my whole life, and there I had some moments where we had a communication, man. Oh, schizophrenic? Yeah, that's that's a, that's a, that's a tough one, man. Like, I, I won't joke about schizophrenia, just because I have a, a lot, a lot of experience with schizophrenia. Um, my dad it, it was, it was a psychiatrist, and we used to have people stop by my parents' house who were uh, schizophrenic, um, dangerous people. And I'll tell you my one quick story, just because you mentioned schizophrenia. The very first day i was going to be alone my parents were going to go to a dinner party at a family's and my brothers and sisters around so i was maybe i want to say 11 years old i don't know i was pretty young whatever young age where being alone is is kind of a big deal so whatever age it was it was my first time being alone and i got a phone call and they said is dr or mrs Druckman there and i said no they aren't and they said who is this and i said Oh, I guess some yummy, yummy things, Melinda. They said, um, I know your parents aren't there because they're dead. They're lying in the street in front of me. <laughs> this is what my very first time being home alone. And I was like, what? And I hung up and I immediately called. I had the number where my parents were and they were alive and they were fine. It was just one of my dad's patients was, was crazy. And um, there were a bunch of people that used to come just show up at my parents' house. Mostly were schizo paranoid schizophrenics. Uh, and yeah, it was, that was my first time being home alone. <laughs> but there's all kinds of different levels of schizophrenia. So you know, I, you know, man, just uh, I'm sorry. For, I'm sorry for that. That's that must be very difficult sometimes. I joke a lot about things, but I'll tell you, I'll bring it back to reality in two seconds if, if uh, you know. If it actually hurt someone's feelings, I know it wasn't. I know Cheryl was just, you know, giving me a little, giving it to me a little bit. But uh, yeah, schizophrenia, not a fun thing. Good family friend is like one of the most foremost scientists. He's got a very very funny last name, Seaman. <laughs> Anyhow, Doctor Seaman, he's come up with a, a medication, that would help with schizophrenia without these side effects. <laughs> And he's he's a doctor researcher, and he's he's very he's kind of pretty well known, and he has this uh, drug medication, but in order to get to human trials, they needed like a hundred million dollars or something, and so I, I'm not sure where the status of it in the last bit, but he legitimately developed this drug, which because I don't know the side effects of schizophrenia uh, drugs, but with this medication he developed, like they created a whole pharmacy company, and I'm not sure where it was, but. Uh, it's kind of sad because um, it's the whole farm industry is just like, you know, just, just, you know, all about the money. And here's this like brilliant guy came along and created a new drug. Okay. My mom has a pretty serious version of it. It spun out into other things because she's been in treatment. Yeah. So, the, I mean, the one good thing about schizophrenia is there are treatments and then uh, there's, there is medication that can have, that can really help a lot. You know what I mean? Because... It's one of those uh, disorders that 
That's right. If you don't, you, you like sometimes you may not be aware that you, it should be treated. Yeah, my whole family's in medicine. I was almost a doctor. That was I was I was going to be a doctor. I was going to be a, um, a pediatrician, and um, uh, I kind of you know something around with neurology. I, I played around with the idea of neurosurgery, but the more I thought about it, and it was more like a lifestyle than it was actually liking to be like in the blood and guts. I just love the brain. But as I, I had the, my, my fantasy life was I'll, I'll do like work on a kid, do some neurosurgery for like an afternoon, and then take the next three weeks off like doing whatever the hell. <laughs> yeah, I wish you'd get some help. She called me earlier this week, told me she decided to be homeless living on a friend's porch. Ah, yeah, it's hard. I mean, um, a great deal of homeless people are schizophrenic. Um, a lot of the time, you know, peace, one of the misconceptions people have is multiple personality disorder, which is very, very rare. Schizophrenia is much more common than that. And um, people often mistake uh, schizophrenia for multiple personality disorder. But yeah, that's, uh, yeah. And it's tricky because um, even with a close relative, you, She's a hoarder OCD, but the paranoid delusion has just taken over. Yeah, it, ugh, it, it's horrible, horrible. Because it's someone you love, right? And, and you're kind of helpless what to do. And this is your mom? Yeah, because what, you know, I'm sure you know this more than me, but you don't have like a lot of le sometimes legal recourse to, to even help them, right? She doesn't have that. It's more conspiracies, not trusted people. She's also violent. So it sounds like, well, I'm not, I can't diagnose, but manic depressive, or just, you know, depressive, yeah. Uh, yeah these are my arguments. Is, is this therapy? What's therapy for me? I've always, um, Bonnie, used this for therapy. Hey, you got a wicked ice cream Whoop, from Belinda Short. Thanks, Belinda. Last year, I got my little sister away from her when I saw the state of the house. Yeah. God, there's so many... <sighs> yeah, you somebody, I just, you don't know what to say. Like, you, here's I, I've heard so many stories, but the, this is when whenever I get sort of self pitying. Like today, I was kind of getting frustrated about some stuff, and then as, as I was driving home, you know, I was just thinking, you know what? Just think about like some poor son of a bitch who's like has nothing. I'm thinking of like someone in India who's on the side of the road has nothing. You know, living like. I'm like a living like a god in comparison, so it's kind of like snap back to reality and go, you know what? It ain't so bad. It ain't so bad. You know, it's all relative. Journaling, yeah. Um, so Belinda's talking about like doing journaling. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. That helps actually, especially if you go to a therapist and you talk about it. Be careful using Haldol. It makes a small majority violent. I guess Bonnie. What is that, an anti-schizophrenic drug? I don't know. Any, I've never even heard of Haldol. Sounds like a brand name, right? I do that too, but your pain is still valid. We all have a different levels of shit. Yeah, yeah, I give myself a break. Like I went through a whole series of emotions when I was driving my car. Like To be honest, I was, I was like feeling terrible about myself, and then I... And after then I was able to just think of like how much other people have it worse and it kind of like, I wouldn't say my heart hardened, but my heart kind of became more so resilient, I guess. So it wasn't like I was becoming heartless. It was more like, I, I, oh, I love this metaphor. This is a metaphor. The more and more I think and learn about it, the better I like it. It's the idea of, is it Phoenix rising out of the ashes? It has to do with life experience. You've got to, burn your old self down before your new stronger self can grow isn't that it's a beautiful idea and it's kind of like you have to like there is creativity and destruction and there was some destruction here at the beginning hey when i was fucking around i joke around on the surface but i really in my heart of hearts when i'm doing it i'm trying to pour myself out there and i use humor to cover up my feelings often so i'm joking around a lot but i'm feeling things deeply so yeah, there's something about growing by burning away the old. Okay, I will, um, it's hard to feel guilty when, when we have a bit of perspective. We kind of toughen up a little exactly. I was on Haldol when I was diagnosed with Tourette's. Tourette's? Wait, 
Wait a second, Russell. I have to go scroll, scroll up. But did you say that you have schizophrenia? Yes. Okay. So Russell, you say that you're schizophrenia, and and Tourette's. Yeah. I have a good friend who has not a good friend. I have a family member who has a mild form of Tourette's, like constant twitching, constant doing this. Um, and I've got a, a relative who has severe OCD. Like it's pretty bad. Did you say someone said OCD? I can't remember. Yeah, I have, everyone has all kinds of fucked up. Um, yeah. Well, I saw, okay, I saw a great documentary about, I think there are three or four guys who had Tourette's, and they had very vocal Tourette's. I think they were like British or Scottish, and they, they had such a good sense of humor about it, because swearing involuntarily and saying inappropriate things sometimes is funny as hell. Like, that's like the basis of humor, and these guys... <laughs> Because they, like, of course they would immediately forgive each other if we, <laughs> they'd be sitting around they'd just, or they'd go to, like, a supermarket and they would call somebody, like, the most, like, off the color, off whatever the horrible thing was. And they were such good guys. I got I to gotta watch it. I think it's something. It's, I'm sure it's not even on Netflix. But that's the kind of Tourette's. Um, Tourette's is such a fina fascinating thing, too, is just because there's, like, a buildup that you can't control, like a sneeze. You know, and then um, there was actually a couple interesting cases. I think it was a, either a surgeon. You had body twitching? Yeah. I think it was either a surgeon or a pilot that had severe Tourette's. Never when they were doing their job. But what they do is they would go into a closet and they just let out all their tics. They, they, they call them tics. Is, is sort of like the involuntary movements or the utterations. Um, and then they would come out and they'd be fine. It was, it's pretty amazing. I know it can be hard in some situations, especially... If people don't know about it, see, I was very lucky because I grew up with a, my whole family were doctors. Like, you know, everyone, we all did psychology. We all, my brother's a doctor. My mom was a nurse. My dad's a doctor. My sister, and you know, we all did degrees in psychology. So like medicine was something we we're always very aware of. So I think I'm lucky because when we talk about all these things, I have some degree of knowledge about just enough to, to understand and have sympathy for it. I have a good friend who had verbal outbursts, but he rarely told people. So he hit it a lot. And to come to come out and feel awful. Yeah, you know what? I think they should just have a sign. Like um, I've been thinking about getting a sign from my from my um. Also have severe anxiety and OCD. Yeah, yeah. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I have a uh, very severe tinnitus, which is ringing the ear caused by a brain tumor. And and before I was diagnosed, I was having panic attacks four or five times a day because I couldn't escape this fucking giant sound in my head. And it made me go insane until eventually got diagnosed. It was, it's, it's making me go deaf. But I'd wear, I was thinking about wearing, getting a card that says like, you know, I'm deaf. Don't bother talking to me because <laughs> I also don't want to talk to people too. But I'm generally like almost deaf in this ear because of it. All I hear, but I hear like shouting, like a screaming sound. Um, but yeah, I mean, with I have don't think I've ever encountered someone with threats in real life. Um, I think it, there was one, oh, there was one guy in that show, and it was really sad because he he lived alone. Um, you know, his job was not interacting with people, and it's just like like a self imposed um, solitude. So sad, just because. And I think he eventually moved to a small town when people got to know him, and things were okay. Oh, you got pretty bad too, really. I get hemiplegic migraines, and I get tinnitus, and then lose my hearing and sight. On the right side of my head. I also lose feelings on the horse. Oh, that's, yeah, that's interesting. Well, I've got this very, very focused lesion that's right on my auditory nerve. So it's, uh, it's, it's like I have 24 7 tinnitus. Sometimes, like, actually, was it yesterday? It was so loud. Some guy was here talking to me and I, I, I couldn't even talk to him. I couldn't, it was like talk. I, I had a great description. I, was, I, I said, sorry, I, I'm kind of embarrassed about earlier on today. He's like, don't worry about it. I said it was like talking through water. Cause that's what it was like. It was like this weird filter, um, like right and, and then, like right now it's pretty damn loud. And I think I don't know if you know this, but a lot of time I'm doing the painting and talking. I have to do it to calm the tinnitus down. Cause there's there have, there's no in my case there's no cure, and there's nothing that can stop it except for I get about half a second of relief when I do this. I put my finger on my, my ear and pop it away, and it goes down a little bit, and then it comes back up. For three weeks, just drop myself so you don't notice. Yeah. Yeah, my life is 
hundred percent different from the way it was. I don't go out anymore. I don't talk to people. I, I can't socialize. I can't go out. Uh, I can't I can't do anything. Even when I'm at the dog park, if someone tries talking to me, it's it's almost like too hard. But the good news is I'm a, I'm like a loner and I, I like quiet. Thanks. Right on, Russell. Well, I'm going to assume, Russell, that, that because you're aware of schizophrenia, you're probably getting some help for it. Because that's like one of those things where, you, you know, it's there's definitely resources out there. Especially, I don't know if you're in Canada or not, but what is the Alla, Alla Prima? What's the Alla Prima? I don't know what Alla Prima is. No, I don't, you know what I'm doing? I'm, I'm going with the flow is what I'm doing with this painting. I had a vision in my mind, and I'll show you the painting I was thinking about. Wet and wet. Oh, is that what that means? Alla Prima? I'm, I'm calling it the who no fucking what Allah. <laughs> That's, I just, I don't think about it too much. Okay, let me show you something. I was thinking about this painting I did. Let me just pull it over here. I have to go back in time a bit. Oh, my website's finally coming together. I've got it so that when you click on um, one of the pictures, you can zoom in and see a, a large version of it. Then there's close-up shots, you can see it. Then I've got the videos of me painting it. So you can actually see the whole thing from start to finish. And this is, I spent hundreds of hours on this website. I still haven't really told anybody about it yet because I, I still wanted to do a couple of things. But let me show you this, what I've been thinking about when I started this. I've got a section called Reproductions here. And this painting, I stole this painting from A.Y. Jackson. So here's the original A.Y. Jackson. This is the only photo of it. And I was looking in here when I did my version of it. I kind of like all these shapes. So if you look what I just did here, you're going to see some of those those waves and shapes. So when I started at the beginning, I was talking, I read Jackson, I was thinking about these kind of wispy, like cool trees. And here's, this is my painting that I did of it. I think mine's better than his. I like mine better. Anyhow, okay, so let me go back so I can see what people are saying. Boop, and then I click over here. Boop. Wait, no, that's not it. Wait, I can't remember what I was just showing you. Did you? Yeah, like Kandinsky. In fact, let me go back to here. Kandinsky. I like Kandinsky because my mom liked Kandinsky. I think that, let me just go to View All Works. I did one recently that was, I was feeling like Kandinsky-ish. Here we go, this one here. Crimson Forest. I wanted to do something free and loose. I just needed to play. This was what came out. It's a landscape of sorts. I had a few artists. I like in the back of my mind, such as Kandinsky. And then these are two artists who I just found on Instagram. And so, you know, again, like there's a bit of Kandinsky colors, a bit of the lines, a bit of the shapes. I mean, this is not totally Kandinsky. It is a mix of, of these other two people who are, who are pretty cool. But I, I'm willing to bet if I was to go back in time, I could find things I've done that have convinced, uh, Kandinsky kind of stuff. Let me just do a quick, if I go by... Is it abstract? Uh, this, okay, this is a little bit Kandinsky. A little bit. 1997. You see those? That's a little Kandinsky. Actually, this is more Jean Miro, who is also kind of neat. You know Miro? 1997. Anyhow, okay. Let me just go back to this. Go back to this wicked thing. We're, we're in the process of trying to make some awesome. Yep. Colors in the flow. That's what it's all about, isn't it? I think I've only bought one piece of art in my life. It was at a charity auction. And it was, uh, no, I bought two pieces, three pieces of art. Two in, in Moscow. I bought these two prints when I was there when I was 20. 50 bucks each. And they're incredible. I have them downstairs. And the other one was... A reproduction like I believe an original Miro in a series it's in my bedroom and it's it's a lot like those two circles and I, I've never got it appraised I think I spent 300 bucks on it 
that was about 20 years ago. It's probably worth nothing. I would probably got scammed, but it was a charity event. I, I buy art constantly, especially if it's on a wall and original. Like if I, oops, if I'm out and about. Nice. Yep. Do it. You can do it. So what we're going to do, what if we just did something like this? I don't even know what these are. It's a little bit of Van Gogh kind of action. Why are those? Okay. I try not to look at too much abstract art anymore, though, because it's mostly what I make. Is that right? <sighs> hmm. Okay. So maybe what I'll do is I'll switch. Excuse me. Back to do some drawings. Unless we gotta we gotta make this thing turn into something. We must use the power of our imaginations. We must use the, the force, Luke. Use the force, Luke. I'll tell you what that's from. Not what you think. Use the force, Luke. You guys may not know this, but I made video games for 25 years professionally. So I have played most games. Not most, but a crap ton. There was an old arcade game, the original Star Wars game, where you had to fly Luke Skywalker's jet down into the, the trench of the Death Star, and it was all vector graphics. But as you got, and you had like these two joystick things like you could shoot you had a photon torpedo like shooting and, and your photon torpedo which had one and you had to go up and down and up and right and left through these like channels while while the death star turrets are shooting at you anyway as you approached the 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 hole that you're supposed to put the thing in the voice of obi-wan comes on and says use the force luke that famous line and because i played that stupid video game so much i associate that with the video game more than i do with the movie Use the force, Luke. We do a lot of classic arcade game stuff. What do you mean we? <clears throat> what do you mean we do a lot of classic arcade stuff? Do you mean you play? My boyfriends and I have an arcade in the basement. Oh, cool. Well, you know what's so cool is that you can get... Uh, this is what a good boyfriend I was. I had a, a girlfriend when I was about 30, and I came across capping up CRT monitors. Yep, that's cool. Uh, most of it is Bemani, but we work with local arcades. Oh, really? So check this out. You'll appreciate this. I had a... I don't know how I got, got it. It was either gifted to me or I bought it, but I bought a Defender, you know, the classic Defender, and it was a good condition. And my girlfriend at the time had a brother. And they live in uh, maybe like if some freaky chance you are them. They lived in, uh, is it, t uh, shit, Southern Ontario. What's that town that has the train that goes right to the water? Is it Timmins? God, it was west of Toronto. Anyhow, he said he, that he he loved collecting them. So I thought, you know what? I'm not going to, you know, let me, I'll just give it to him. So, so we had it shipped over to him. And ever since that, I don't think I ever even met the guy, but he loved me ever since because I got him an original Defender. Yeah, for sure, Russell. Show it up. There's a couple ways you could show it. You could post it on my, on my, um, are you in Facebook, Russell? Yeah. So you could here I, i'm pretty sure there's a couple you could you could actually um just post the pictures here in in the live chat and it should come up or you could put i think people like on under community community on facebook you could post stuff yeah yeah original defender wow wow man i was addicted to video games for most of my life dragon's lair okay i got some stories but dragon's lair okay and space ace so those, so my first foray 
attempt in professional video games was um, by the guys who made uh, Dragon's Lair. They're just north of Toronto, and I was doing animation, and I was actually never a huge fan of that style of gameplay, but um, uh, the name of the studio, God, I, I still remember going there and showing my portfolio, and I was young. I was about, I was about 20. Actually, how old was I? I was really good in the way I tried to get a like a job there. Um, God, the name of the company is tip my tongue. They were like just north of the city, like something like Mississauga or something. God damn, I remember what their it was just it was just like a, it was like an industrial park. Anyhow, they're the guys who who made Dragon's Lair and Space Ace, and I had done a bunch of traditional animation. So I was if I had taken the job, which I didn't, because I think I went back to university. I think that's what it was. They wanted a full time, um, and a lot of it was like just like basically painting. Um, yeah, it, no, it wasn't Midway. Who made? I, it's kind of bugging me now. I I just want to look it up. Um, where's my keyboard? It's gonna pop my head just as soon as I type it in. Space. I'll do Dragon's Lair. I got so many stories about Dragon's Lair. I probably can remember still some of the moves. When you're about to fall down, you gotta go left and down, I think. Okay. Franchise. Dragon's Lair. Don Bluth. Yeah, I think those are the guys I interviewed at. Cinematronics, that's not right. That's probably the publisher. <laughs> Who is the developer? So that's the publisher. That's not necessarily the developer. I, I went up to met the developer. <sighs> Cinematronics, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> hmm. Okay, this is one of the things where I just want to remember it. It had a different name. In fact, I have a portfolio. I still have my portfolio that I took up to show those guys. I, I know where it is. It's upstairs in one of my rooms. I've got this portfolio where I literally went, oh, in fact, I can show you right here. Oh, no, okay, I haven't put them on my internet. I, I have them on my desktop. I, I've got tons of stuff I haven't put up in on, on uh, my website yet just because I don't have time. But check it out. So these are going to be some of the things I went to show the guys who are making Dragon's Lair. So these are all these are all tons of art that I haven't uh, put up yet. Uh, I'm looking for look at those tons of shit. Uh, let's. It was under cartoons. Okay, so somewhere in this section. Were a bunch of not this. Some was garbage. Like just, like, yeah, that was one of the cartoons. It was meant to be like a logo of this little plain personality. I did T-shirts with cartoons on them. Oh yeah, this is just to show. This is just to show um, a four-stage simple animation of, of a character. So it goes one, two, three, four. The dog falling, slap, falling down. This is uh, yeah. This is one of them. So this was meant to be. Uh, they want to see like a Disney-esque background scene. So I just invented this 100% from scratch where you're walking over a little thing and there's like the, the in innkeeper is kind of like, how do you describe it? Like passed out and there's like some sort of ye olde English Disney and some weird shadowy character. So this is one drawing I did to show them. Um, <laughs> there's There's got to be a lot more. I got to see what I'm looking at here. Oh yeah, this so Ready Soft. Yes, there you go. I'm pretty sure it was Ready Soft. So for some reason, I did this little dragon on like a side of the hills, and I put the words Ready Soft. Okay, so I'm almost paused. Ready Soft is the original developer of Dragon's Lair, because that's why I did that. Oh yeah, I did some some cartoon stuff. These were kind of funny. Oh yeah, so this would have been little sketch cartoon idea i'm not a gar big cartoon guy so i did i converted mickey mouse into like a, a freaky character um i did some random people 1994 okay so that's oh yeah i remember this this was like some character ideas for a chorus entertainment tv show okay anyhow i have hundreds of stuff i'd never bother to show yet 
Okay. You look like you could use some fresh air. You look like you could use some fresh air. Try to tell me I need fresh air. I love cartoons and stuff. I, I sucked at cartoons. To be honest, I never liked cartoons. Except when I was like a little, little kid. Chair, what are you hassling me for? I'm, like, I'm in a vibe, man. I'm in a groove. Okay, so. Yeah, when I was a kid, it was all about Saturday morning cartoons. Or Sunday morning, morning cartoons. I used to run downstairs, 6 a.m., try to beat my sister. We'd watch uh, Super Friends. Form of an eggplant. Or whatever it was. Hmm. Hmm. You can use fresh air. I like to, I love being grumpy. You, Cheryl, you're giving me an excuse, so I love you. Thank you for, for doing that. Look, fresh air. Okay. What about, oh, look at this. It's almost like there's a, a kind of winding pathway to this, like, forest. It has this crazy green on either side. Super friends. In the left, in the middle. Oh, don't do it. Wait, Russell, Cheryl, you got to tell Russell the way I am. Cheryl knows. I'll fill you in, Russell. Anytime anyone tries to make a suggestion, I always do the exact opposite. Because I like being stubborn. It's one, I, I have a very boring life, so it's one of my, my few satisfactions is, is being a curmudgeon. I'm, I'm willfully a curmudgeon because I, I like people who are curmudgeons because they're honest. That's why I like people who swear is because they're more likely to be honest. And I just don't like fake people. So you can be weird. You can be rude. You can be grumpy as long as you're honest and real. That's just the way I am. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Would Cheryl's like, put a moose in there. <laughs> I think I probably went off on you for like 10 minutes about a moose. <laughs> you remember that one time when you was like, put a moose in it? <laughs> I was like, fuck, I'm not going to go put goddamn moose. And I probably told you my moose story too. One time I came up close to a moose with my dad. Moose are pretty cool. I like animals. Animals are awesome. Seriously, she told me to put a moose in there. And I'm like, no, I'm not putting a goddamn moose in my painting. You also tried to, uh, was it a penguin or something or a deer? I'm like, hell to the no for a deer. No, uh, did you ever see the, did you ever see the cartoon Bambi? Where there's like, the Disney, like Little Bambi's Happy Through the Forest. It's called Bambi Meets Godzilla. La la la, la la la, la la, happy little deer. <laughs> like the giant <laughs> um, foot of Godzilla comes and crushes her. That's the end of the movie. Okay. Damn it, you. I don't want that. Okay. All right, so. Okay, I can feel it. I can feel. I can feel like this could be a light area here. So, yeah, that's what I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make all of this. This will be like a, a foreground layer here. So one layer of foreground here, a foreground here. There might be a path. I, th I might can do the path, but I'm gonna make this lighter. So as if we're going in there. Yes, that's true, Cheryl. Shit, when you think about it, you've gotten like the most of anybody. There's a whole, the, the bench is right next to me, by the way. I've been meaning to get back to it. It's right here. 
Cheryl's Bench. I even called it Cheryl's Bench, even before I even knew who the hell you were. You were just somebody on on the live stream that was like talking back. So I was like, okay, fuck it. It's your bench. <laughs> it was you and Cindy. Remember that? I got. I still have to get back to it. Oh, I'm. I'm probably gonna move into move on to big canvases soon, so you can see my big fat ass. Because I'll be doing standing paintings. I have a viewer who has been with me in three years and I let him decide things like colors. Once in a while, I'll do that. Here's the thing, if I invite someone, yes, but I don't like unsolicited advice. Here's the thing, part of it is because I feel it has to come from a genuine place, which means I've got to come up with it. That's part of it too. And I've been like this my whole life. No one's been ever able to tell me what to do, like ever when it comes to art, so. But it's sometimes fun. I have a wheel of media, I'll just spin if I want something fun. Wheel of media. Okay. Where's the white? Oh, here you are. Okay. Oh, I need, I need a new high tech palette. Here we go. Okay. All right, so let's try to add, to feel the distance. For some reason, it's almost like Wizard of Oz. All the yellow brick road, yellow brick road. I believe that the yellow brick road was a metaphor for the monetary system. And gold was a form of stability of the monetary system. It's not along those lines. Someone's got to do it more justice than that. You're laughing, but you watch, Bonnie. I'm telling you. Look, look at this. Here, let me show you something. Oh, God damn, I lost. My mouse is dis keeps on disconnecting. Maybe I got to charge it. Come on, mouse. There we go. Okay, check this out. I'm going to type in Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz, Yellow Rick Road, Monetary System. That's probably not the right words, but. <sighs> what does the Yellow Rick Road represent in the wonderful? Oh, that's the Golden Path and something. Okay. Among the leading interpretations of Baum's story is a Christian allegory has Dorothy fallen the Yellow Brook Road to get the Emerald City Heaven an atheist allegory. No wizard. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, here it is. I don't, I don't know what off the grid news. That doesn't sound like the most reputable place. But popular literature frequently skirts the boundaries between truth and fiction. Many classical literature stories have blah, 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 blah. Blue, 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 blue. blue. Yeah, uh, it, that's essentially what it was about, like what I just said. Captain, I'm trying to find the, uh, like a quote where it talks about the whole monetary system. Anyhow, but do you need turmeric? <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, is there an ad for turmeric on here? Where does it say turmeric? Oh, right here, <laughs> the most effective turmeric. So, hey, don't knock turmeric. It's actually very good for you. You should put it like in coffee and stuff. It doesn't taste very good. It's those ads. Yeah, I did. Have you ever watched Dark Side of the Moon? With it was yes, I have watched Dark Side of the Moon, and you play the Dark Side of the Moon. Was it with those? There, I don't think. I think, yeah. There's a couple things where you play a movie and you use a different soundtrack, and it all matches up perfectly. And if it was Wizard of Oz, that could have been it. But that was like one of those ones you did when you're like you're 14 and you're like, oh man, dude, I gotta try this thing out. Let's do this. But um, yeah, it could have been it could have been the um, Wizard of Oz. Okay, 
so let's start. Hmm. Let's start doing. Oh, look at these things. Are these going to be the trees that. Whoosh, these weird little branches. I just got to start I'm moving forward and stop slowing down. Just see see what happens here. Too bright. What time is it? Nine fifteen. Nine fifteen. Do I want a path? Hmm, that is a good question. Let's just do this. Well, let's see. What is this horrible mess over here? Sometimes I, I just like to go into the sky because the sky for me is the most is one is the most fun because I can't screw it up. It's just like you just do a bunch of splooshy little lines and bada bing, bada bang. You got a you got a thing with the stuff with the guys with the who knows who. All you got to do is just got to go squish some of this stuff out there, slap it on, and you're almost done like dinner. But not really. I got to keep on doing it until it just feels right. Feel it's got to just feel right. Now, I'm not so sure about these bumpy hills. They might look a little stupid. I have watched Pink Floyd with Wizard. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I bet you, I bet you Mary Joanna was involved. Or Hashish. Hashish. <clears throat> it's usually the case with you stoner kids. You stoner kids today. With all the marijuana, the marijuanas. Oh God, I wish I liked it. Marijuana. Uh oh, looks like Greek vestige next to water. What in the hell are you talking about? What is a Greek vestige? Look, shh. Colette's jumping in here, talking about Greek. F what the fuck is a vestige? Is that like some sort of like bunch of uh, like those Doric columns and stuff? Let's find out what what um, Colette is talking about. I'm gonna type in here Greek vestige. V e s t i. Fuck. Where's i? I, Greek vestige. I bet just like dork columns and broken statues and stuff. Yeah, see? I know my Greek architecture. Actually, I don't. I just think it's dork is the only kind of columns I know. I'm pretty sure these are dork columns, aren't they? They got the big, sem big circular grooves, and they come in sections like this. Someone's got to know. Okay, I think what she's talking about. Where, where is my screen i think she's talking about this section over here maybe or this but i'm probably gonna paint over that i haven't heard that since art history show me the dork boys <laughs> art history that was funny okay i'm gonna brag for, should i brag now i'll brag for one second i got the highest mark ever at my university in art history for the sole reason i I figured out how to get grades with it. Canzolomas. Why should I follow you? You gotta do you gotta do some good shit, man. You gotta do some really good shit for me if you want me to follow you. It's gotta be freaking awesome. So here's my trick in my art history. What all you had to do, the uh, what what the professor would do, like I actually learned a lot because I'm a visual person. If you tell me something, it's gone. My brain's an etch a sketch. If you show me a picture, a Corinthium, Ionic, those are the other ones, right, Cheryl? Anyhow, all you had to do is he would go over a slide in a piece of art, and you had to write down three out of like five possible things, like the date, the artist, what art period, and what significant thing was about it. So I just took these notes where I'm and I was able to I don't have a photographic memory, but I got a pretty close to one. Like I, I'm not like Rain Man, but I can close my eyes and I can still see, I can still see that the Locus Cyrillus 
was written in green ink on the right side of a page in my notes in university in 1993 for for my neurophysiology class. I can still see the color of the ink. Like that's weird shit like that I can do. Um, but I kind of have to, you know, memorize it. But that's that's what I did with that art class. That's how, that's how I got like the scholarship and everything. I mean, part of the scholarship was that. But I got the highest mark ever because I all I had to do is write down three things that were visually memorized. It was just it was like cheating. It felt like cheating. Of course, I failed French because I sucked at French. No, this was actually part of a BFA program. That wasn't like um. Oh, oh, Colette's Colette's asking me to do a, a purple house on the right side. Oh, Colette, she just doesn't know. Someone's got to tell her. Tell how it works around here. Tell her that the grumpy bastard doesn't like to, um, doesn't do requests. In fact, I'll do the opposite. I'm going to do, instead of a blue house, I'm going to do a green submarine. That'll be the opposite. Boop. Boop. Ba bing ba bing Here's a green submarine. Bing. 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 Pinging. It's, it's got a it's got a nuclear propeller on the back. <sighs> we had to do three important things where they were. Then it would be a compare and contrast. That was part of our BFA two, at least the first two, something like that. Yeah. Oh, you think there is one? Uh, that's because you're fucking you're, you're making things up, man. Oh, there could be. I'm just messing with the Colette. Colette's talking about she. She thinks she sees a purple house on the right side. You're right. How do I know which right you're facing? This this right beep. Well, I didn't do any purple houses. I swear on my on everybody. There's no purple houses. But if you want there to be purple houses, that's okay. Yeah, but, th but then again, Belinda, but I still remember stuff. Like, I, I like actually was, a, it was an effective learning mechanism for me because I had to put it in my long-term memory. Here's a couple cool facts. Did you know we have a short-term memory that resides in our prefrontal cortex, area of the brain in the front, and we can remember five to seven chunks of information. How complex the chunks are determines how much you can remember. And that's your short-term memory. Your long-term memory is what you have in your, in the, in the, so let's just say further regions of the brain, the deeper cortex, and you will remember those things forever. In fact, you you have billions of memories that are stored in your brain. The problem is you just need the cue to bring them out. And a sense of smell is one of the uh, famous ways of, of, of getting a memory to arise from long ago. So you just need to have that associated cue with your long-term memory. So, so there's a very good chance there's all kinds of memories that are just stuck in your brain waiting for it to be brought out. And a sense of smell is one of those things that often... You may often hear people going, oh, that smell, that brings me back. That's just the way our brain is hardwired, probably for you know biological and evolutionary uh, um, um, purposes. But here's the cool thing about the short-term memory, the idea of there's five to seven chunks of information. How many numbers are there in a phone number? Typically seven. That means the average person could probably remember a phone number. But did you know that they're grouped into an area code and two chunks? That means once you, with a phone number, you tend to mem remember three chunks of information. So you can actually remember two more at least. Yep. Yeah, well, I mean, that's uh, that's sometimes like, you know, seeing therapists to go through stuff can, can help you with that. Hmm. I was going to tell you about the mnemonic where I can, I can memorize probably about 100 things in about 15 minutes. And then you can come back and say, I can like list them in front, backwards. You could say what's number 42 and I can tell you what it is. And all it is is I just use a mnemonic system to associate things and chunk them into under seven chunks. It's a chunk within a chunk. Um, another way people do it is they visualize rooms. The first room has those things on them and then you go to the next room and it's just like a, a simple mind trick which everyone can learn to do. And uh, chess masters just do that naturally. They're able to ch chunk very complex moves into one of the seven things that they can remember. 
Yeah, I've done that too. I mean, I'm 40. Oh, you're young. You're just a young pupper, eh? Belinda, you're just a young, young thing. Been working on it a long time. Art has been the most effective thing. I can find references. Yeah, I remember those exercises. 40 years old. You're it's past your bedtime. <clears throat> What are you doing on D Live, Belinda? You're old. You should be on. You should be on YouTube with all of us old farts. Look at you on D Live on the trendy new platform. How did you hear about? You work nights. Nice. What's that got to do with it? What's what has like? How did you even hear about D Live? You're on YouTube as well. Did you, you're on. You you became to D Live because of PewDiePie, didn't you? Come on, admit it. I've never tried Mixer before. I don't actually watch people stream. <sighs> okay. So this is this is still pretty sucktastic. It still it still needs a while to go before it's gonna turn to something. I like Mixer for the low latency and decent. You know what? I'm actually on art, pick art or art pick, but no one's there. It's called picarto.tv. And I'm even streaming on Twitter, uh, sorry, Twitch, but no one, I mean, no one gives a shit about art, really. I mean, they, they, if it's a video game, yeah, that might be cool with it. But what does this mean? Okay, I just got to know, maybe someone who knows Twitch, which, uh, did I just lose my mouse again? Okay, let me, hold on a second. Let me get my mouse back. Come on, mouse, where are you? There we go. Okay, so I just noticed this. Over here on Twitch, this little chat window came up. Let's see what this says. It says something... Bubba22, Twitch affiliate or partner. What does that even mean? Okay, I'm just going to click on it. Whoa, please don't share passwords or personal. Bubba Twitch affiliate, real or view bot, cheap and closing all your goal. Okay, it's, I have no idea what the hell that is. I'm too old for this shit. Fuck that. Okay. All right. That's probably about the most time I've spent on Twitch. This this needs to uh, need some love. I'm just trying to think of what it could be. But what is it? Uh, but I'm not. I don't, I've been streaming on off for 17 years. Wow, 17 years! Like that's since the beginning of probably streaming. Okay, so what does that mean if they want to be an affiliate? Ah, you know what? I don't care. It's too much. Too much effort. I don't care. I'm, I'm, I just I want to be more grumpy. I actually don't want to know. I'm so looking forward to like being completely really old and just have a rocking chair on my front porch. Just wait for some high school kids to walk by and yell at them. <laughs> Maybe I'll get a pipe. Not smoke it, just like hold it in my mouth like Popeye. Just growl at them. Okay, so this painting currently is super sucktastic. It needs something. What that something is, I'm not sure. Hmm. Hmm. I really gotta get rid of that pink. Am I gonna do some gray in the sky? Oh, look at the gray cloud. Gray clouds. You need to be improved somehow. Oh, what if what if I put orange in here? Like as if I was gonna go with dark green, but maybe let's do that. It's a good thing you don't make the sentence because I'll just get I'll get ornate. I'll get ornery. Is that a word? Ornery? <clears throat> Let's 
So I'll tell you, there's a video game called Redneck Redemption. Red, Red, Redneck Redemption? No, Redneck Rampage. And it was like an old school, maybe an Atari game. I like being ornery. Yeah, exactly. Anyhow, there's one of the AI was this old man, and he would yell at you, get off my lawn! <laughs> and I laughed every time, every time that AI would do that. Let me just see if I can find it, because that will crack me up. If I could find get off my lawn, I'm going to turn it into a world-famous meme. Okay, so Redneck Rampage, Redneck Rampage, get off my whenever i say it this is what i'm thinking of anyone remembers one of the first games oh that's just a reddit thread wait i wonder if there's a video oh, here we go redneck rampage <laughs> holy, shit. holy shit that's right this is how it starts holy shit <laughs> whoop it kill it pass there's chickens everywhere. See, get off my land. Listen. Oh, this guy, Bubba. Okay, listen carefully for get off my lawn. Or get off my land. <laughs> All those stupid birds. Yeah, Bubba. Look, I even said Bubba. Get off my land. And when you drink alcohol, you're, the whole scream will start tilting because you're getting drunk. This is classic video game, man. Sounds like Mo, doesn't it? Okay. All right. You get the idea. Somewhere in there, one of the AI goes, get off my land. So that's where my now famous grumpy yabbering comes from. All right. You know what I'm thinking? What time is it? Uh, I forgot to record this thing again, didn't I? I'm thinking this is just so goddamn awful. I might need to sit on it for a day before it'll turn into something not awful. That's kind of what I'm thinking about. I might have done such a fantastic job of making such a horrific steaming pile of horrible, nasty, puketastic, alicious artwork that might actually require a day of rest until I can resuscitate it to some kind of semblance of... I'm really good at the nonsense yabbering. New eyes approach, yes. New eyes approach. Because it must, it must be improved. Currently, it's not good. It must be something much more. Sometimes let things sit for months. Oh, yeah. I, me too, man. I got, uh, I got like 15, 20 paintings that have been there for like about a year now. <laughs> hear ya. I do that all the time. Me too, hell. I have a boring life and I'm a Taurus. <laughs> You're a car? I know nothing about astrology. Your analogy is lost on me, my friend. My schizophrenic Tourette's Taurus friend.
Who looks in yellow? Hmm. Maybe purple. Oh, let's do this. Let's go in here with this crazy ass blue. Blue and some. Wait, wait, where is this? Oh, here it is. Oh, shit balls. Here it is. This color. <sighs> oh, I think I might have. Wait. Oh, wait. Oh, mouse is dead again. Colette left. She couldn't take it, man. I missed a bunch of your texts. Oh, my God. I missed a whole bunch. Um, I'm an artist from Quebec. I do my best work at night. Shit. Sorry, Colette. I didn't see that. There you are. I got to scroll up because. Uh, Come here, where the hell is the mouse? Hmm, that's weird. Huh. Could be dead. That means I don't know how to turn this thing off. I don't even know if I have batteries. It's too bad, I was all excited about doing this blue and purple. Okay, screw it, I'm just gonna, oh, there, connection lost. All right, well, let's just see if it comes back after a few minutes. Yep, I'm painting. I'm fuck. I'm painting on uh, this. Oh, I toss it's Archie's Archie's watercolor paper. Only the best. <clears throat> the problem is, uh, oh, there it is, back. Okay, so I gotta go over here. It says, "Whoa, I missed a lot of text." I don't make, uh, you said you like being on, yeah, I love Robotron. Oh my God, I love Robotron. That's a top-down dual joystick controller that's like gauntlet and you're like constantly firing in every directions. I love Robotron. Okay, Call it says, I'm an artist in Quebec. I do my best work at night. Russ says, this is looking good. I'm watching you listening to Mo. That's when I was doing the get off my lawn. Into the mist. The new eyes approach. See you all soon. I like it. Are you painting on paper? Archie's. It's, what do you mean laughing at? It's Archie's. Come on. Make me laugh. <sighs> Arches. I've always called it Archie's for the past 30 years. So I'm sticking with it. <laughs> this is Arches. How do you, you pronounce it Arches? Yeah, you got to hoard it. It's goddamn so fucking expensive. I thought I was getting a deal when I ordered that, but it turns out it was the f loose paper version, not the one that's stuck on a block. So that's why it was so cheap is because it was loose paper. And, and with loose paper, you have to tie it down, right? You got to like, this is what you have to do. This is why I don't like loose paper because you got to deal with like painter's tape holding your edges of your stuff down. And see already, you can see, look how much it's... um paper because the, the moisture is pulling the paper edges up arch arch ar, arch which is dumb i don't know what that means all right all right all right so i gotta turn this thing in it's still pretty horrible this is horrible it's how i gotta turn this into something good hmm Browns, that's the answer. Browns. It's too, it's got too many primary goofy colors. You have a block right now, the, f f well, it's 150 to 300, it's gonna be one of those. It's gonna be, 300 is a higher number, that's normal. 150 is pretty light. You don't need much, Archie's stretch. I don't stretch it at all, I just fucking, acrylic tends to sit on top more, so if it does warp, it's not nearly as bad. Yeah, I don't, I don't paint. I haven't used acrylic in quite some time. Um, I, a couple years ago, discovered water-based oil paints, and they're awesome. So you get all the benefits of oil paint without having to deal with, like, nasty chemicals and stuff. No turpentine, no linseed oil, no poisons. You don't need ventilation. Tape it down and watering, stretching it. I see. Oh, yeah, I remember doing that. I totally forgot about that. Right. Get a spray bottle. Right? So that 
when it dries, it tightens up. Um, but I would have to get different. This is like a painter's tape. So this wouldn't work. I, this is frog tape. This is like good for painting walls, like edges and stuff. Um, but I haven't done what you're talking about in years and stuff. I just sort of go with what I have and then just make something happen. Okay, I don't know why. I'm just something. Something's not coming together at the moment. I think the aliens are blocking the signal. We have browns. This feels, I think with like this thing, I might actually come back to it at another point. I'm not sure if I'll continue this one right away. I, I see this thing has potential, but it's just, it's just not there yet. It's not cohesive. It doesn't have a, a unified feeling to it. It's just it's too strange. Like it has these silly bump hills and then what is this? And it needs it needs some line definition, some contrast. It needs to give you a sense of more sense of depth. Right now it's kind of flat and, and the colors are almost like gross candies. You know? And it's not it's not talking to me yet. It's not saying saying what I want it to say, whatever that is. You know, I'll just know it when it happens. So I think I might have to come back and do some more layers and just play with it and That's what I think. One thing I didn't do is I didn't do a wash underneath. So the problem when you do that is it's nice to have a wash of a color because whatever that color will give it a sort of uniform tonality, like if it's a warm reddish or something. Instead, I kind of have to go and poke at all the white spots on it so it doesn't look like it's just like um, unfinished in a way. Okay. How do we make this into something more? Maybe some, maybe some hard lines might be good. The thing that happened to you on YouTube, yeah, it was kind of weird, eh? I was just playing some videos and laughing my ass off, and I had them over. It wasn't even full screen. It was just, and then uh, they killed my live stream, and they said we're blocking you. Uh, it's now blocked in all countries. So I actually deleted the video. And I read in somewhere that says it doesn't even matter if you've deleted the video, you still have to have this 90 day suspension and that's it. Thanks, MC Mayo. I'm MC Mayo. I like the cheese, D -d 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 Big Mac and see how I did that. MC Mayo in the house. For those old folks who don't, MC stands for Master Ceremony. From old school hip hop days, like Run DMC. Walk this way, talk this way. Easy on the mail. <laughs> I was pretty. Okay, I got. You got a three-minute ban because it was live, but if it had been a reaction video, it'd be fine. Yeah, isn't that weird? I don't, I just, I don't. I'm like, it makes me want to go off all this stuff and only host it for my website. But of course, no one, I'm older than those guys. Holy shit, you must be 99,000 years old. 
You are old, MC Mayo. Let's find out how old they are. Let's find out how old. What were those guys' names again? Run DMC. Run. M. Run DMC. You better walk through this way. Oh, that's right. Daryl. Talk to, I used to listen to that song nonstop. Nonstop. Let's see. Oh my god, MC's super old. I'm surprised he's awake this late. Yeah, 60. You're more like 90. There's no way you're older than these guys. Come on. Um it says here uh, maybe. Okay, Run DMC, Album Spread Gold. Yeah, this Run DMC 1984. I was 14 then. So you were like you're in your you're about 23 then. How could I have been 14 when they came out? I mean, my friends were in the break dancing. They used to get paper, uh one of my buddies, Nyan, used to get cardboard and go down to Young and Dundas and break dance. I was never that cool. I was too shy to do that stuff. I was too like, no, I don't want attention. And my buddy, he taught he he would do Michael Jackson, he would do like the way well, you know, all the ticking and shit, you know, like I got yeah, that's like that's what Freaking Tourette's with dance moves is the ticking. You remember the ticking? That's good. I'm glad you're laughing because at least somebody's going to be laughing. Walk this way. Run. Okay, how do I get back to the screen? Okay, here we go. Oh, no, that's not it. Holy shit, I wasn't showing the screen. Damn it. Ah, for fuck's sake. Because I'm so I'm so professional when it comes to camera work, so professional. All right, MC, you old son of a bitch, fucking sixty years old. God damn, that's freaking old. Actually, my brother is. My brother is gonna be sixty soon. That's like basically. I'm also just throwing the towel now, pal. It's all over. I'm almost 50. <laughs> Sucker, you're going to be 60. And I'm not even in my 50s. Laugh my ass off. Okay. Well, my friends, this is not good. It needs love and understanding. And right now, it's just not good. It ain't got no. Oh, that that means something. What does that mean? That's somebody gave something on Deed Live. Let's see. I got a diamond. Woo woo. Wow wow wee wah. Very nice. Thank you, Belinda. I have no idea what it means, but I think I can give the shit away now if I click this. Okay. There's a way to give out the stuff that I've earned. Let me click this. No. How the hell do I click I click this thing to give it away? Someone's got to tell me, but there's a way where I can see what happens on D live is people donate the virtual currency called Lino, you know, and then when you're streaming, you earn it. So I have 108 of these things and there's a way for me to like poof, give it away to people, but I haven't figured out how to do it. So if someone can tell me how to do it, I'll be happy to give you all of my Lino, Lino. Okay. Oh, sorry. The whole time I was I was doing this. This is, this is what I'm looking. This is D Live right here. For those who don't know it, it's just like all the other streaming services. And Belinda gave me some of this um, diamond, and I have it set up so it does that sound. Wow, well, we will. I think you have to go into their rooms. I understand. I'm pretty sure that the person who's streaming can click a button and it gives it out, and there's like a timer or something, right? So, wow, oh, nice. uh oh, looks like she gave me another diamond. We should party. I don't know it, or did I just click a button? See, this is how clued out I am. I don't have a freaking clue what's going on. 
I'm going to try to give away some of the diamonds that you gave me because it was just so nice of you to get a diamond. I'm far too old to know about this diamond. Me too. I don't know what the fuck. Look at this. Three bunch of old farts, although Belinda's only 40. She's like a kid. MC. Belinda's 40. She shouldn't even be up this late. Anyhow, so all three of us. I'm. She's representing the 40s. I'm representing the 50s. You're representing the 60s. None of us have a clue what the hell's going on. Right? That's, that's the truth of the matter, isn't it? Okay. This, yeah, I think I'm just going to want to stop and then maybe tomorrow during the day when all you old farts are having your naps, especially you, MC, when you're going to get, you're going to bring your walker over to the, the television screen, you know, and you got the oatmeal drooling down your face. Just wipe it off, and, and I'll try to finish the painting for you, you old fat bastard. No, I'm the, sorry, I'm the fat bastard. You're the old fat bastard. Okay, I should, okay, I'm usually still in bed around this time. I should just read something. If I only streamed here, I'm sure I'd know. Yeah. Well, you guys have been fun. Thank you for letting me insult you. I appreciate it. You made my day. I was very grumpy and annoyed before, but ever since you let me talk shit, I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> no, man, I'm, I'm feeling good, Russell. Russell Milo Johnson. By the way, MC stands for now. As far as I'm concerned, you're MC Mayo. You're never going to be married to me, Claire. Sorry. Whenever I see MC on there, it's MC Mayo with a side order of ketchup. All right. Good night, Belinda. Go get some sleep. Good night, uh, all you sons of bitches. I'm going to do this crappy painting tomorrow. Let's just leave it. Let's see if my dog likes it. Nugget, what do you think of this painting? Come here. What do you think of this? Do you like it? What do you think? Is it good? No? <laughs> She's like, get this fucking thing out of here. <laughs> All right. All right, good night. Take it easy. Oh, I'll get some ice cream. Yummy, yummy, yummy I got love in my tummy. Yummy, 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 yummy I got love in my tummy. Blah, blah. Yummy, 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 I got love in my tummy. Yummy, yummy, okay. yummy, 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 I got love in my tummy. All right, no more ice cream. You're cut off. All right. Whew. Okay. All right. Take it easy. See ya. I got to figure out how to turn this thing off. Pretty sure I had to go over here and click these buttons. Ah, no, no. It's all good, man. That's all funny. I kind I made it on purpose. I put Homer Simpson voice whenever someone gives whatever that was. Ice cream. All right. I'm going to make this good right now. You know, mm, not so good. All right, ciao, goodbye.